Our girl sobs in a room. Her doctor comes in and tries to talk to her. Guess she didn't like him too much. We pump into the dock outside. Here we go. I don't think there's any violation to this, but he's awfully nervous about us being there. Being the master of conversation that I am, I dupe him and get out that she has some seriously powerful family. Then, he tries to lecture me on the fruits of the poisonous tree like he's doing me some sort of a favor. Apparently, she is crazed into thinking that some ten-foot-tall creature saved her from Carlos and Freddy. Yet the doc tells us that a kid down the hall has the same story, and she must have overheard him or something and taken the story for her own. So much for that, PhD. I played you like a fiddle. Of course, it's a different skill. My life is more conversational, more socially directed at dealing with people. Hinkley just reads a lot of books. Brecken talks with a kid. I gotta speak to this girl. Problem is, though, she's drugged up from medication that this place pumped into her to keep her, you know, calm down. I did get that she was at Mickey's place, this dirty, run-down bar. Mostly a place for drugs and stuff. I meet up with Randy outside. He tells me the story of the kid playing in the rail yard trying to find the boogeyman spotted somewhere around there. Pretty crazy if you ask me. Then again, this watcher is perched watching our girl. He's trying to place a face into a memory. Then showed me that there was something that he didn't like about this broad depicted next to him. The creature leaps buildings following Randy and I back to the PD where Randy opts once again to go home. You know, sometimes I envy him. The creature sees our department shield on the building and is getting closer to remembering things about his past. I know, I know you're asking how I know all this. I'm getting there. 